All right, everyone, I'm going to make this video pretty short and sweet. It's been a long time since I uh, did any videos of any kind because uh, just a lot of stuff going on in my life right now. Um, Father-in-law is in the uh, hospice care at the VA over here in San Diego, La Jolla. Um, it's not looking like much time left, so it's just a lot of back and forth driving. So it's just not enough time. Anyway, I kind of want to put this out here because I just had this issue the other day. Um, I don't know if, I don't remember, I haven't backtracked on my videos, so sorry if I, hey, if you checked out one of my other videos, and I do have the pre-filter on there, but I did put a pre-filter on this from S&B, uh, because I was going to the desert a lot, and when you're falling behind some of those trailers, and, and you're hitting that silty stuff, I mean, it just gets really dirty, and you can, I mean, I've cleaned inside of here before, but, uh, the engine bay gets filthy, I mean, just nasty in here. Um, I do take the air compressor to the engine bay, uh, not too close to some of the components. You don't want to, you know, have blown in a hundred something PSI and some of these little gaskets that are meant, not meant for that. But anyway, I was having a little a bit of a dead pedal or s sluggish kind of acceleration, whatever, you know, you, you press the pedal and it would kind of hesitate. And I'm thinking, okay, I know this is drive-by wire. I've been driving drive-by wires from Ford since 2005 when I had my old F-150. Um, that was their first year on the trucks that came out with drive-by wire. So I'm, I am used to that, but that truck was really super. I mean, you barely, you breathe on the pedal and it was gone. So, um, and my wife has a 2007 Expedition with a 5.4 liter, <laughs> same drive-by wire. It works great, but I took that off and I noticed somewhat of an increase um, in my throttle response. It did feel better, but it still wasn't, I just, I didn't get it. It just wasn't doing it right. So uh, what I did, came over here like everyone should do every once in a while. And oh, where's it at? Right there. There's plenty of videos online on how to do this. If you change your filters now, mind you, I've already changed both of my fuel filters. Front, this one, the main filter. Oh, that's your for your water separator. And I also changed this filter right here, and that's like your last filter before it's gonna hit your injectors, your fuel rail, whatever, all that stuff, type whatever that's called. So anyway, I decided I was gonna go ahead and do a water check. Now I did a water check um, a couple times all the way up to about 20 or I mean sorry, 15,000 miles. And I had a few drops in there, nothing big. I always fill up at Chevron, sometimes at a, a, a 76 station if I need to, but most of the time it's at Chevron. It's just convenient for me, and I'm not like traveling all around the world, and I don't need to like make sure I find a good spot. I go, I mean, I I go back. This is my daily driver. I travel the same roads every single day, so I know I know this stuff is good, and I know where the gas the gas station I go to get my diesel is good. Um, I could go to a truck stop, but I don't. So I did that. Helped out a little bit. Then I did this, like I said. Underneath there, water separator. Did, uh, where, where are we at? That guy. And uh, what I suggest is getting a nice clean type of jar. Preferably glass. Now, I, I used a mason jar, but I just cleaned this out. My uh, Tostitos... Uh, forget what this was this was a with a splash of lime I'm telling you this stuff is great it's awesome put that on a block of cream cheese and you're good to go but anyway um, so I have a couple of these jars I just did the uh, spaghetti jar last night so I like to keep a few of them around um, for this purpose and I went ahead and drained my water separator and my mason jar is bigger than this this is a uh, I don't know if it's gonna tell you the size on this I'm assuming it's probably pretty close to a pint, but um, anyway, then, you know, you guys know the bigger mason jars are taller than this, maybe, might be a little skinnier. Well, let's just imagine this is a typical mason jar, and I had water up to about right here on my first pour, and of course it was brownish, reddish, or whatever because of the algae. Well, I know that there's nothing here, especially my gas stations and stuff, that um that have a lot uh, uh that time uh allowed to grow grow that much algae so it had to have been when i was traveling going to the desert a lot and 
one of those stations out in um, El Centro or um, away East California before right before you get to Arizona. Some gas stations out there, and I even went to the truck stop. So I'm assuming it's one of those random gas stations in Acatillo. Um, but I know it's not, it wasn't from here. And so anyway, I went and drained that several times. I mean, I probably filled up, let's imagine this is a mason jar again. I probably filled up four of these. And the first one, like I said, was about up to here with water. Every pour after that was still getting water up to about right there, like nonstop. And I figured, let me just empty this whole thing. But I didn't want, <laughs> it's a, actually a lot. It's like two gallons before my check valve actuates on that, because uh, I did my filter, I know. And I didn't want to waste that much uh, diesel. So I did about four pints, which is a couple quarts um, of uh, of diesel. And I noticed just a few droplets. So I'm like, okay, that was the first night. I took it for a drive that night, felt great. Next day I went to work, it felt pretty good. I come back the next day and I did two more of those mason jars, basically like two more pints, another quart. And there was a little bit more water in there. And I'm going, holy crap. Um, so then the third day I came back and I went ahead and, and I just I just maybe went about halfway up one of these with some diesel. And I just noticed a couple specks of water. So it wasn't extreme. But I did notice every time I got more and more water out of there, it helped with my throttle response. It's weird. It's like I would let off my, my brake pedal and my truck it, it moved more at, at like an idle instead of me having to push the gas or the 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 pedal and just the touch the just the sensitivity went it better and this is not like in my mind it's it's totally weird i i remember i'd had to push down a little bit and then and it, stop and go traffic i hit a lot of stop and go traffic in in the morning go on the naval base and uh you know you're rolling and then you want to hit the pedal again to get going and it would it would lag but then it would pick up and it would lurch. I mean, it was kind of weird. And go, the hell? So it doesn't do that anymore. It's like it was stuck. So no codes, no nothing, no lights, no nothing. Nothing telling me that I have water in there or nothing like that. I don't have a bad sensor or what. But that was a pretty decent amount of water. And now I'm concerned. I don't think it was in there long enough to worry about rust. But I'm going to probably run um, some uh, additive. Now, I do run my um, everyday diesel treatment from Hotshot Secret in there. Every single fill up, and I do um, a two ounce, two ounces, so it'd be a half of this bottle, two or two and a half ounces ish on a full tank. And so I might do the um, diesel extreme now that I found all that water, even though I just did my diesel extreme clean out uh, four months ago, but they say every six months. That was too concerning for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my diesel extreme. Um, but that mixed with that, my air filter did help. So if you're having that weird laggy pedal and you're thinking, oh man, the only way I can get rid of this is a, th a throttle sensitivity booster from BD uh, diesel thing, whatever, or um, pedal commander, or I need to tune and stuff like that. That <laughs> this like totally took care of that uh, that touchiness and just maybe a little bit more pep off the line. Didn't lag as much. I try to get out of my way in traffic and I'm like, oh my god, I'm a sitting duck. Um, but now it actually gets out of its own way. Um, but but anytime before that, bef before I did the, the drain that and whatever, once you hit a certain RPM, it would just freaking scream like usual. So it was just that lower RPM speed and, and, and sensitivity was just, I don't know, it was weird. So that's kind of a little update to um, what I got going on with this guy. I'm going to make a video on my... Polaris Razor, um, just some of the things uh, I did I'm going to do here pretty soon, and um, just a couple other updates I want to do on this truck, but I just want to make this quick video, and uh, I hope that helps somebody out there that's having an issue, and then they try it, and they go, wow, I have water in my diesel, and cleaned it out, and they noticed that that their peppiness came back, well, that's, that's what it was, and I will, now I'm going to pay more attention to it since I... You know, obviously, regularly going out to um, the desert and places that I don't usually go to for fuel. So, um, that's all I got, guys. Later.